I don't know how China is. Coming from China, everyone has said that Taiwan is like China, but better. And mm. I'm like, so why would I want to go there? You know? <laughs> a lot of other people told me like, okay, now you're definitely on the Chinese blacklist because you've been named on Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs Instagram account. I mean, I never really had an interest of going anywhere. Thank you so much for inviting me to my own studio. Yeah, of course, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> I guess you could just start by introducing yourself. My name is Lucas. I'm from Sweden, but I've been in Taiwan for 13 years. Now. I came as an exchange student and now I'm a YouTuber, which is a real job apparently. So now, I, now <laughs> you're all grown up. Now I'm grown up. <laughs> After being here in Taiwan for seven years, I had so many foreigners coming up. Oh, you've been here for more than one year? Wow, what do you recommend? Where should I go? What should we do? Because I'm so tired <laughs> of explaining to foreigners you should go to Tongsha Fuxing, take bus 218, get off to the gold museum, go to Tipa Mountain, go up the long loop. Don't go to actually Tipa Mountain, go to like the mountain behind Tipa Mountain, go back, take the bus back, and then you can go and have like the entire I made that video, but no one was watching. Like three weeks later, it was like 30,000 people. Like, what the? <laughs> like, <laughs> Wanda something. It cannot be that many foreigners in Taiwan that needs to know this. But then you see the comments, and it's just like Taiwanese people. They're like, oh, I've lived in Taipei my whole life. I've never been. Mm. And I'm like, this is my favorite place in entire Taiwan. Mm. How come you have never been? Like, mm. What is wrong with you? <laughs> and I realized that Taiwanese people are actually interested in knowing places around Taiwan as well. So before that, did you have any kind of experience in like storytelling or kind of media? Or Nothing. That? After I became a YouTuber, I've been thinking back to this now. When I was in school, so we had to like write about our dream job, oh. and I had professional PowerPoint presenter. <laughs> you should have seen my, my PowerPoints in eighth grade, man. Oh. There was like every <laughs> single effect you could possibly <laughs> add. You must hate my videos then. I have no effects. <laughs> you make videos? I never watch your videos. No, <laughs> Who are you? Now you're part of the elite club. There's probably like five foreign YouTubers in Taiwan. So what you have to realize is that those five, that's like my whole world. That's like my... my <laughs> The all, that's like the only five friends that I have. It's very rare that I would hang out with them not doing YouTube related stuff. You wouldn't just go like sing KTV. Oh, no. No. God, no. <laughs> it's, it's a lot lonelier than people might think, but yeah. I love it. My perfect day is just to stay in the studio. I've been doing two videos per week now for like the last three years. What? I've been doing weekly videos for five years. Such a crazy album. I mean, every waking time, I've been doing something with videos. Planning videos, recording videos, editing videos. I would work 12 hours. I still manage to get like eight hours of sleep. Two hours goes to my girlfriend, two hours to gym and lunch. All of the time is YouTube. It has to be something you enjoy doing and it has to be something that you enjoy doing for free the process is the reward a lot of people could say that but you've been doing it for so long that if it wasn't that way you would have quit after oh yeah year one. i can't share with you like I, I i mean for the video too for the first three years every single nt i got went straight back into the channel by like buying a new camera buying new gear buying microphones and everything my hourly wage was like 92 nt dollars imagine if someone would try to hire you for a job we're gonna pay you 92 and t but you have to pay your own rent computer equipment no paid lunches no vacation time and you have to be <laughs> in your room alone do you want a job or not no one will take it it's just such terrible conditions unless you just really love making videos more than anything else in the world so when i first started traveling as a foreigner in taiwan is like the easy way in the whole story was already there sometimes it was just not interesting rainy shit terrible sometimes surprise price of a lifetime. Then uh, COVID came. Everyone else started to make COVID videos comparing their home countries with Taiwan. All their videos got 100,000 of views. I felt so betrayed at that point. The YouTubers that I was growing up with, we had all been doing like travel videos. None of them had ever had COVID. We didn't have COVID in Taiwan. And I was like, you're only doing this to get more views, to make yourself feel better. So for three months, I was like so jealous. One of them had like another viral video. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> This, <laughs> this, this, is, in. this is bullshit right now. <laughs> then I started to like interviewing other people. You're from the US, how is COVID in the US? Oh, you're from France, how is COVID in France? From there, COVID wasn't really a thing anymore, but people still liked the interviews. I just continued doing that because my interviews got like three times as many views as any of my travel videos. And it's a lot nicer to sit here in an AC room <laughs> than to like hike for three hours <laughs> to record like a mountaintop somewhere. What do you think that people appreciate about your videos, you have a 
pretty big following here. Y yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> my presence in the videos is getting less and less as my channel's success grows. For example, me and my girlfriend just went back to Sweden. I already know that those videos are gonna be worse than any other interview video I've released this year. It's just the reality that people don't really care as much about me as I would like. <laughs> but, okay. but it's so. right. Also just delving into that more, there is this kind of genre of foreign YouTuber mm. in Taiwan. Yes. Like, <laughs> what do you think attracts people into watching this kind of content in particular? They just wanna hear good things about Taiwan. Making Taiwan look better than any other country if we're gonna go like very geopolitical. Sadly, foreigners just don't care about Taiwan. Taiwan hasn't really been as recognized as other countries. When you do have these YouTubers coming and enjoying it and showing it to a more global audience, people are like proud of Taiwan. They also want to like support it, spreading Taiwan outside of Taiwan. It's so funny because like I'm being branded as this like politic channel sometimes, Taiwan versus China. I have never compared Taiwan and China because I. I have never been to China. I don't know how China is. But if I have a guest comparing Taiwan and China, that video is oh, like yeah, blows up. So yeah, we can just go into that. What do you think about China? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. Never thought you were asking. I could tell you what other people have told me coming from China. Everyone has said that Taiwan is like China, but better. And mm. I'm like, so why would I want to go there? You know? Like, you already got know. the good parts. And then I was also told that I was on some sort of Chinese blacklist. So I was like, I don't want to try my luck. Oh, you're actually Pushing on the blacklist now. I made some videos that got shared by Taiwan Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where Swedish politicians, without my knowledge, saying that I'm a real YouTuber, not paid by China. Oh. And that video, yeah, yeah, of done. course, got yeah. like viral. I've never been paid by China. They've never offered me money. And I've been like, no. They haven't even approached you. They never even approached me. So, yeah. so it's like, you know, <laughs> I've never been paid by Sweden either. And then a lot of other people told me like, okay, now you're definitely on the Chinese blacklist because you've been named on Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs Instagram account. I mean, I never really had an interest of going anywhere. Mm. But ever since then, I'm like, okay, maybe I change my name first and then I visit China sometime. <laughs> Who would be your dream guest in terms of like, what would get you the most views? Oh, the most views for a Taiwanese audience. Yeah, Caucasian female mom who had a birth <laughs> in Taiwan. Bonus points, if you're a foreigner who have completely like trusted Taiwan, bought a house, you've had a surgery, mm. or you can convince another family member to go to Taiwan. <laughs> That's like the golden one. I try to like pull out the most interesting stories. I kind of know what Taiwanese people want to hear. They're super proud of Taiwanese fruits, their HSR, their healthcare. And then I just focus more on that. And I literally just like cut out things that foreigners love that Taiwanese people don't give a shit about. <laughs> like going to the beach, waterfalls. My problem now is that after five years, you're running out of these things. <laughs> so you, can, more issues. you cannot have people that, that loves the gout here every single week. Would you ever do something else? Or do you really feel passionately about introducing Taiwan? You want the honest answer or the YouTube answer? I want the honest answer. <laughs> okay, so the honest answer, I just love to make videos with the best gear possible. And in order to do that, I need better YouTube income. To get better YouTube income, you need more subscribers, you need more views. The internet haters are usually other foreigners who would just say like all the foreign YouTubers, they're just doing the same, same, same thing over and over and over. But that's because the Taiwanese audience likes to watch the same thing over and over and over. When I do try to make a video about something else, no one is watching it and no one knows that I am making a video about something else. They're there. <laughs> so that's just the business and how it looks like to actually be a full-time YouTuber. How much would you say you spent on gear total? You don't want to know the total cost of all my camera equipment. A tripod. But a <laughs> tripod, yes. The tripod is 100K. It's two pieces. You buy the fucking leg separately. That's so ridiculous. I stopped counting at 1.6 million. Ah, oh, that hurts. <laughs> and that was like a year ago. I probably bought like another like 200K. You can end it on what you like about Taiwan. I can honestly say, hands on heart, Taiwan is by far the best country just because of like the safety all the things that you need, like 24 hour delivery, Uber Eats, you could learn Chinese, but you don't have to, especially in Taipei. You can also go out and just explore like the most amazing nature. You can touch Taipei 101 and then you can take the HSR, which is amazing. And then you go down to Xiaoliao Chou and see a sea turtle, which you cannot touch by the way, <laughs> uh, within like three hours. Stuff like that blows my mind.
there are nicer beaches. There may be bigger cities. If you want Japanese culture, then of course you go to Japan. But Taiwan literally has everything of that. And if you stay for more than one month, you never want to leave. The opportunities of truly designing your life exactly the way you want it, it's only in Taiwan I will be able to do that. It's literally the best place on earth. Thank <laughs> you.